Daka, 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 daka. Oh, you gotta love it. You've got to love it. Hello, welcome to Motion RC. Uh, here today for a extra flight review on a, a model that you all know very, very well. It's the 1600 millimeter uh, Flightline Spitfire. Now, I'm all about Spitfires. My son's middle name officially is Spitfire. I'm British. I love them to death. Now, I had the clipped wing one, and uh, I, in this video, it's all about honesty. Now, in all honesty, that one did meet a watery grave, unfortunately. It didn't fare as well as the uh, ME262. In fact, I never saw it again. However, we've got some shows coming up here in Europe, and I've been able to pull this one out for the shows. And what I want to do, speaking of honesty, is to give you a, uh, a new perspective on this. Now, I was flying the, uh, the model before on the uh, Admiral 5000, the latest generation 5000s. Now, when this model was originally designed, they were using the older, heavier 5000s. And what I always found is it was a little towel heavy, uh, even with that 5000 all the way forward. However, happy days, we now have the 5100 Admiral packs, high C packs, great packs, and they are quite a bit heavier. In fact, I think they're the, the heaviest pack, 6S pack that we do. Heavier even than the, uh, the 6000, those carbon packs. But in this model, they work very, very well. And they, for me, uh, give me the opportunity to get that CG where I like it. It's uh, it's pretty critical uh, with a Spitfire, and I'm very fussy when it comes to CG. And right now, I've got it just behind uh, this panel line on the Spitfire, which is actually a little forward of the manual, around 85 millimeters. Um, the manual recommends 90. Again, I like it a little forward. Little note for you on all Spitfires, any Spitfire you ever fly, any Spitfire that's worth its salt, you always want to be looking for this panel line here, if it's a Scal Spitfire, because uh, that's pretty much where your CG is. All the way from the small models right up to say, I've got a Comp ARF Spitfire, and the CG is bang on there. So that's an easy point of reference. Now if I open it up here, Tom, I think you can just see there, that's the 5100 uh, in there, it's not even squeezed in there, still plenty of room. That's approximately where I've got the, uh, the battery lined up for my balance. And uh, you will see that it handles very, very well. You still need to give it full up elevator when you're taking off, keep that tower down, especially when you're taxiing because it does have a tendency to tip over. It is a Spitfire after all. So this flight is really all about just showing you how it flies with that heavier pack, the 5100. And uh, we're gonna just take it through, uh, through its paces on this pack and we've got a little run cam underneath as well. And let's uh, let's be honest, it's another excuse to fly a Spitfire because it's the best aircraft ever. Tom, are you ready? I'm Get ready. The run cam going. There's a big eagle in the back. Oh yes, the eagle has landed <laughs> or will land soon. You see him? Yeah, I see that him. There's an RC kite flown by one of our club mates here. That's pretty cool. But time to get this eagle up in the air. We'll get the run cam going and we'll show you with the 5100 Admiral pack. All right, let's go. All right. All right, so we're rolling. Now, the grass is quite soft and spongy and a little thick. You notice I'm holding full up elevator, as I said, in high rate. That's my low rate for flying. For taxiing and to get it uh, onto the threshold, onto the uh, directly into wind, I always taxi with full up elevator and I'm holding it all the way down because it will tip over. You've got a really problem manager. Another little tip, I slowed down the servo uh, rate on the ESC by one millisecond just to stop the uh, torque being so violent and I found that that helped quite a little bit. So here we go, holding full up elevator, keeping that towel planted down and I'm going to bring it around into wind about, well, we're slightly crosswind now, Tom. Okay, so about there. That looks good. I'm gonna go mid flap for takeoff. I'm in a low rate now uh, on elevator, still gonna hold full up elevator and then ease the elevator off as I come into it. Don't forget, give it up a bit of an opposite rudder. It's got that four blade propeller and it will give you a bit of rotational torque. Taking off. Okay, slowly increase the power, let it get on its feet. There we go, correcting. There we go, that was with mid flap. Gear goes up. Is the gear going up? I don't think it's going up yet. Okay, let me bring that round. Look at that. Look how good it looks. No, here comes the gear. There it is. How's that, Tom? Good. Sun is coming out. Sun is coming out. I'm flying a Spitfire. What could be better? 
Now, before, when I flew this on the lighter packs and I couldn't get the CG where I wanted it, it would kind of hobby horse. It would kind of go up and down like this, depending on the throttle setting. And I didn't like that at all. And I've managed now to eradicate that. And now it looks, look at that. You see that, Tom? Yep. Okay, this is just under half throttle now. Downwind. Ah, oh, okay. This is the Spitfire everyone's talking about. I knew it was good, but now it's really, really good. I'm bring it, bring it around and I'm gonna pull up into camera. Look at those roundels sticking out. Okay. Look at that, nice and steady, and up and roll. How's that, Tom? Great. Oh. I mean, what else can you say? It's, it's a big Spitfire. It's one of the best on the market. It looks every inch of Spitfire at every angle. Here we go, a little pass here. Nice and solid. Look at those specials sticking out. Wow. Gotta say, makes me feel a little bit emotional. It's flying over Holland. Uh, it is in the 1944-45 scheme. They definitely would have seen action around this part of the world. Look how rock solid that is. Oh, there it is. It's a Spitfire. Coming up, coming up, pulling around, pulling around. I'm going to roll off the top. There. Oh, Tom, I'm so excited, excited about this. All right, let's do uh, some, uh, let's do a dirty pass. I'm going to get the flaps down, do a touch and go. Mid flaps now, feeding on the elevator, feeding on the elevator. And easing off the throttle. And there's your touch and go. Oh, I almost nosed over there. You've got to watch it. You've got to watch it nosing over because it will. It is a Spitfire. Let's do another pass. Do a roll this time. Tom, you ready? Yep, ready. This is low rate coming up and roll. Beautiful job. Now that's low rate. Let's show you high rate, which I admit I don't think I've explored yet. So now we're in high rate and you good, Tom? Yep. Okay, that's high rate. Yeah, definitely not scale. We would have won the war a lot quicker if we had that roll rate on the Spitfire. There's a kind of loop, I'll bring it back round. I'm gonna come straight at it, all right, Tom? It's all right. All right, here we go. Oh, you gotta love it. You've got to love it. All right, so now I'm gonna bring it in again for a touch and go, this time without the flaps. So keep it a bit more inertia. And you've gotta keep on the elevator. And make sure that nose doesn't tip over. It is a Spitfire. It's got the oleos working well. There we go. Lovely. Gear goes up. And away she goes. Let's roll it this way. You alright there, Tom? Yep, I'm alright. Okay. Let's do a pass this way. Look at this, look at this. Look at that profile. Spitfire. That looks great. Love this plane. Okay, now I'm gonna quickly uh, land because I wanna do a takeoff with no flaps because there is a bit of wind and actually it flies better uh, in takeoff without the flaps I found when there's a bit of a breeze. Bit of a bounce. Okay, so we will just get it round. Now, the trick, trying to avoid nosing over, as I said, Full up elevator, I am in high rate now on the elevator. We'll bring it back around. I'll sort out the timer on my uh, uh, on my radio. Do get a little more flight times with this 5100. It handles the weight very well. Let's just turn that off. And this is now takeoff uh, with no flaps and should be a little more elongated. Full up elevator, a little bit of opposite. And let that tail come up, keep easing. There we go. The gear goes up. And that 5100, it's a big, it's a big airframe. It handles the weight effortlessly. In fact, it's nothing but benefits. You get longer flight times and you get that CG just that much more forward. So it's a great pack for it. And look, with that higher C rating, it's actually got a little more poke than I remember it having before. Fast pass, straight past the camera. Now, of course, it's not EDF fast because it's got a big four blade propeller on the front of the nose, but it looks great. All right, we'll do one more roll. How's that, Tom? Great. All right, gear's coming down. Where's the wind now? All right, this way, pretty much landing as I was. 
Now, this time I am going to be mid flaps. Uh, of course, you can go full flaps, but I'm not going to do that in this wind. Bit more power. All right, and then get ready to ease on the elevator. Lose that speed. Lose that speed. Beautiful. There we go. That's one you can walk away from. So there it is. It's the Flightline 1600mm Spitfire that you all know and love. But this is just proof that it flies extremely well on the 5100, which is heavier and really helps with that CG if you like it a little bit nose heavy as I do. Um, my son is here again. Yeah, wait a minute, Silas, look, what's over there? What plane's that? What plane's that? Spitfire. Spitfire. And what's your middle name? Spitfire. Yeah, there we go. I'm not lying. So, there it is, Silas, so my son is going to go and get the Spitfire, his namesake. Thank you very much for watching, in stock in both warehouses, and I've got to go help him with this. Thank you very much, see you next time.